Adrian, welcome to the Jane Austen Centre. It's very lovely to have you here. Now, you, of course, appeared as George Wickham in BBC's Pride and Prejudice. What effect do you think appearing in the series had upon your career? Um, it was the most fantastic thing to do. I, I, um, I actually auditioned for another part. I auditioned for Fitzwilliam Darcy that I think was played by Anthony Calf in the end. Um, and uh, as far as I know, the Wickham dropped out, and I think that might have been Rupert Graves. I probably shouldn't say this. Um, and I was then suddenly called in to, to be interviewed by uh, Simon Langton, who um, had said to Sue Bertwistle he thought I was too big to play the part. I think I'd interviewed stupidly in a leather jacket for the first time, so I probably looked rather bulky. Um, and, uh, and she said, nonsense, he's, he's tall and slim, as I then was. And um, I then went in and interviewed and was offered the part. And at the time, I was working at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and uh, Richard Dreyfus was directing a production of Hamlet as well that I think Damien Lewis got, weirdly. So I left the RSC tour in Sheffield to go down to interview for that with Tracy Ann Oberman, who's now rather successful. And, um, but I already had Pride and Prejudice in the bag. I sort of went down out of vanity, really. Um, and it's been... It's a wonderful thing to be associated with, really, because even after all these years, people still come up and say, it was my favorite Pride and Prejudice. And uh, I think partly because it was very well directed and it was well cast, but also because in six episodes, uh, there was enough uh, time, actually, to explore the characters properly. And the problem with doing a feature, of course, is you've got to cut out various subplots and you therefore can't give as much weight to certain areas of the book. Because this was a six-part series, we were able to do it properly. Now, do you find that you are still recognised as Wickham? I, I think less so as I get <laughs> older, to be honest. There was a time when I was recognised probably more readily. Um, but yes, I am, because, of course, people keep revisiting the series and uh, it's great, it's a real pleasure to be recognised as Wickham. Now Colin Firth has famously tried to distance himself from his role as Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. How do you feel about Wickham looking back on it now? I know people say that Colin Firth has distanced himself from the part. Um, I don't know if that's true or not but if it is I suppose it would be b because perhaps he felt that it was rather defining him as an actor, which actors don't like to be defined by one particular part, uh, because it can be a millstone around their necks. Um, Colin was absolutely perfect for, uh, for Darcy, uh, and quite rightly got all the plaudits. Um, I have absolutely no compunction uh, about, <laughs> or reluctance, to be recognised as Wickham at all, and to be associated with the series. It's done me nothing but good. It was fun to make. Um, it led to uh, uh, a couple of friendships, uh, particularly with Lucy Briars, who played Mary, is still a mate. Um, and it was, it's nice to be associated with something of such quality. I have to ask, what was it like working with Colin Firth? What was it like working with Colin Firth? Hell on earth. <laughs> Hell on earth Firth. <laughs> it was a nightmare. No, um, Colin, well, Colin and I had worked together once before. We'd done a film called Dutch Girls, a William Boyd script, also produced by Sue Burt, whistle directed by Giles Foster. Uh, myself, James Wilby, Tim Spall, Colin, Daniel Chateau, um, playing a rather unlikely group of 17-year-old schoolboys since we were all in our mid-20s, I think, at the time. But we were supposed to be playing this sort of group of public schoolboys set loose in Holland. Um, and... Uh, so I did know Colin from before, um, and of course we buddied up on this film. Um, he's very, very, uh, and I say this with great respect, you know, he's a very, very focused um, actor. He's also got a very good sense of humour. Uh, I know that he, and he said this publicly, that he found the part of playing Darcy was quite a frightening prospect. I have to say it was frightening for all of us. You know, I'm sure Alice and Stedman thinking, oh my goodness, I'm Mrs. Bennet, was probably quite frightening. Um, certainly for me, playing Wickham was, uh, ha had its own share of nerves. The very first read-through we did at the BBC was 
around an enormous table with about 400 people, it seemed. All the different producers, all the different people, the heads of departments watching us. And it's, um, it's, it's uh, scary. But um, no, Colin and I um, got on extremely well. I mean, there is a story going around, which I've told, of us ending up naked in a jacuzzi together <laughs> on my first night's filming. <laughs> And uh, Joanna David coming in and taking lots of photographs, which she then swore she would destroy. <laughs> but that was quite an interesting twist on Darcy and, Darcy and Wickham's uh, friendship. Uh, now, you've previously appeared at the Jane Austen Festival, and you're now presenting the Jane Austen Centre in-house film. Uh, tell us, what do you think about the city of Bath? Well, particularly on a day like this, it's the most ravishing city in, in, in I was going to say, in the world. But, you know, let's stick with the UK. It's a wonderful place. I, I lived here for a year when I was 18, when I left school. And I worked in a restaurant on top of Milsom Street, which is, I now notice, is Cafe Rouge, but used to be a, a rather hip hangout, bohemian hangout, called Parson Sally, full of um, dropout aristocrats and um, who, who ran the restaurant from a, a, a commune called Surrendal. Um, and Roddy Llewellyn, who was part of it, was going out with Princess Margaret, which is all under wraps. Anyway, I was a waiter there for a year, so I know Bath well. And actually, I've always wanted to move back. Um, but my life has taken me away from Bath. Um, and I live in London, but um, I, uh, I, I was brought up near here as a, as a, as a boy, uh, near Bradford and Avon. So I used to come to Bath a lot uh, with my mum and my dad, and um, any opportunity I have to come back to Bath, I take it. I just think it's the most fantastic city. And finally, Adrian, tell us, are you a fan of Jane Austen's novels? And if so, do you have a favourite? Well, shamefully, <laughs> um, I've only read Pride and Prejudice, uh, and I think Northanger Abbey, and I think that's it, which is a really terrible thing to admit. Um, but whenever I do read her stuff, I think I should read more because it's enormously perceptive writing and much funnier than I think one remembers. When you do come back to Jane Austen, you say, of course, it's so funny. And um, so now I feel um, sufficiently prodded into continuing with some more of her books. <laughs>